no, say it not so. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This is Boost My Build, the series where we take your PC part picker list, we tear them up, we put them back together, and we massively increase your performance. This month, we've got streaming builds that aren't streaming right, Minecraft, RTX builds that aren't RTXing in their Minecraft. We're gonna fix all of that. If you get value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by Micro Center, my favorite tech place on earth. If you've never been to a Micro Center, you are missing out on the coolest place for PC builders to get the best deals on the latest tech. Our video editing PC died recently, so I ran over to my local Micro Center where the friendly staff helped me find everything I needed. A top of the line X570 motherboard, Ryzen 5950X, awesome Lee and Lee case, and more for a great price. Whether you're building a new PC, buying a pre-built laptop or TV, or just wanna hang out in the coolest tech place on earth, head over to your local Micro Center. New customers, use the code in the video description to get an amazing $25 off all AMD and Intel CPUs. Then add in a $20 motherboard combo discount for $45 in savings. We've got Desmond. I've been looking for another PC for a while now, hoping to go 1080p, decent FPS. They mostly wanna play Fortnite, Roblox, and Minecraft, but, but, they later want to upgrade to play Minecraft RTX. Well, that's not the easiest thing to play, by the way, out there. They'd like to spend around $800, which is not a ton of money to spend on a PC intended to play a game at good FPS for ray tracing, but they would be willing to go up to $1,000. Let's see what you've got. Oh, no, no, no. Say it's not so. This is not your fault. This is not the fault of gamers who keep doing this. I squarely put the blame on AMD. So you've got $820, which is a little bit over where you said you wanted to be, but still under your $1,000. And overall, the PC starts off pretty good, but there's a major hole in this PC, which is you've got the Radeon RX 6500 XT, four gigabyte card. This is a terrible GPU. People say, well, Jason, you're always saying how good the RX 6600 and 6600 XT are, and that those are great values. Why is the 6500 XT such a bad GPU? And if you don't closely follow hardware news and the history around this card, you're probably like, big question, right? Okay, here's the thing. AMD gimped this card. This is a laptop GPU that they basically spun up to create a desktop GPU. They didn't create its own die, and as a result, it only has four lanes. That big connector at the bottom that it has 16 lanes of bandwidth. Only four of those actually work and they work at PCIe Gen 4 speed. So if you put this in a PCIe Gen 3 system, that's bad. That being said, this is a PCIe Gen 4 system. I mean, really, this is not a card that's gonna ray trace anything. The other thing is you don't have any media encoding. So if you ever wanna capture your gameplay footage, share that, definitely can't do it with this GPU. And it's just a, a terrible product. Now, $180, much better price than it was. If it gets down to about you know $130 or $100, there's still better used options, but I could see spending money on that new, but certainly not for ray tracing Minecraft. So let's dump this thing. The rest of the build, honestly, I quite like, although I might, we might want to reshuffle some things. We've got the Ryzen 5600X right now. It had been on sale for about $175, come up right now to about $200, but you know, we could certainly go with the 5600 instead. I like the Deepcool AK400, you know, given that we need a better GPU, we may want to find a slightly cheaper cooler, but this is a very high performance uh, single tower cooler. I don't like the Gigabyte B550 Gaming X. This. This is a, a motherboard that's marketing as a gaming motherboard, and there's a lot of these out there. I'm not just calling out Gigabyte, MSI, they all do this, right? But it doesn't really have any gaming features on it. They just use the name so that you spend more money on it. The audio on this board is real, relatively mediocre. The rear panel connectivity, better than some of the other gaming motherboards, but still relatively mediocre. To me, this is not a, a gaming motherboard should have gaming features. I do like the memory here, two by eight gigabyte kit, relatively cheap, it looks nice. I can see there's an overall theme going on here. You've got kind of a black and gunmetal theme to the overall PC, I quite like it. Crucial P2, not bad, one terabyte. Often this will be among the cheapest you know, uh, NVMe drives and certainly one terabyte of storage is probably what we're looking for to play these games. $84, we could probably find a slightly cheaper one just because they rotate. I do quite like the deep cool, CK56. In fact, uh, I, full disclosure, Deepcool sent me one of these cases. It looks like a really high quality case. To me, this is especially at $89 with ARGB here. Now the fan in the rear is not uh, ARGB, it's just a regular uh, fan, but it comes with three ARGB fans. 
to me, a real sleeper, especially when case prices have gone through the roof, to find something like this, it's $89 right now. It's really, really good value. And then the power supply, I think we could probably do better on price, 60 bucks for 600 watts. I'm not sure we even need 600 watts on this build. And it, while the, six, the BQ, it's an okay, it's a C tier rated unit, I, I just feel like we do definitely do better. So for $820, we're definitely not playing Ray Trace Minecraft anytime soon. This whole build is in need of way more performance. All right, I call this the $990 Minecraft RTX PC because it's actually gonna be able to play Minecraft with RTX enabled. Let's jump into it. $989, we came in $10 under your $1,000 stretch limit. And the, the whole idea behind this is not to get some garbage GPU now that won't even play the games really well that you wanna play and then spend another wad of money later to get a second GPU. That's gonna end up costing you a ton of money. Rather than that, we're gonna go ahead and right now gets you the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. This is the kind of best NVIDIA GPU I could put in here. Now I did check it out. Minecraft RTX will play with like the 6600 XT, which is a much better value than the 3060. I maybe even squeeze in a 6700 XT in here. However, there are, I guess, some frame time pacings. I'm not an expert on Minecraft RTX. I just saw some potential issues in there and decided to steer clear of them by going with an RTX 3060. Now we went with the cheapest two fan card here. It's a PNY version for $390. I went ahead and swapped out the 5600 for the 5600 just for price. You can just consider them interchangeable. Like yesterday, the 5600X was actually $5 cheaper at $175. Today, it's back to $198. So whenever you go to buy it, just know that the 5600X, if you can get that one for about five or 10 bucks within the 5600, that's the one to buy. Otherwise, 5600 is gonna give you the same amount of performance. For the cooler, we just went with a slightly cheaper and good enough performance. Now look, the Deepcool AK400, higher performance cooler for sure, but the this is a 5600, a Ryzen 5600 SE214 XT. It's got ARGB on it, 20 bucks. This is all you're really gonna need. We swapped out your motherboard that's a garbage tier Gigabyte Gaming X nonsense with a board that's actually for gaming and it's only about eight or nine dollars more. That's the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite. Now this has ALC 1220 audio codec on it, much better rear panel uh, I.O. Overall, just a much higher quality motherboard for only $135. I did end up swapping out your drive uh, for a slightly cheaper one. Again, you can just go at the budget level, you can just go with any of these NVMe M.2 drives, one terabyte, they're all about the same level of performance. So in order to save $12, we did that. But again, the Crucial P2, you picked out often is the best price. Just keep, They just keep rotating, so just find the one that's the cheapest. And I did like your kit. I like the Deep Cool CK560. Uh, I think it will, will go really well with that kind of black and gunmetal look to it. It's got the nice RGB in the front. And again, $90 for this case is a really, really great price. We also switched out your power supply, just a slightly cheaper unit. Again, just shaving off some money here and there. Shaved off about, you know, uh, 10, 15 bucks going with the Asus Tough Gaming B550. Now this is not a modular or semi-modular PSU. However, it's a better rated on the PSU cultist list. This is a B tier uh, rated PSU. And I really do, I've used this in a couple of builds. I really do like the uh, the sleeving that they put on the uh, the PSU cables for this. It looks really nice. Not something that I would even think about using cable extensions to cover up. So overall, we got you the same level of CPU power. We got you an equal cooler. We got you a much better motherboard with a gigabyte by B550 Aorus Elite, an actual gaming motherboard with gaming features like decent ALC 1200 audio, and we got you the RTX 3060 so you can play Minecraft right now with ray tracing, no need for an upgrade a year or so in the future. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. All right, we've got Jonathan. Jonathan says they're from Vietnam. They need a new PC for 2K gaming, 1440p, and streaming. And their budget's $2,800, but they need two monitors with that. They want some RGB, they want some bling, but they're not sure what exactly to get. Now, Jonathan, I noticed you sent me a PC Part Picker list, of course, from the US, because in PC Part Picker, they don't have country vendors for Vietnam, unfortunately. So we're gonna do our best with the US vendors to give you a general idea of how to improve your build. Okay, here you are. I, I'm gonna be really, really honest here. The build absolutely works. Everything you put together absolutely works, but I just think we are leaving so much performance behind. I really hate 
the direction we've gone on a couple of these components. And I think we have a lot we could improve on this build. Let's start off $2,858. You're $58 over budget. That's not that big a deal. Let's start off with the monitors of all places. On the one hand, we've got one monitor that makes kind of some sense to me. It's a 1440p monitor. It's kind of a budget tier ViewSonic. Not a, not a model I would specifically select myself, but it's perfectly passable, especially if in your market, some of the monitors that I might select are, are higher price. So this is absolutely fine and $330. But what I don't understand is then we're pairing it with the AOC 24G2. Now this is a fantastic 1080p 144 hertz monitor, but it's a 1080p monitor. What we're talking about is doing things at 1440p. I would love to see us stick with 1440p here. And I think we can do that. I think we ended up going with this monitor because we were probably already so high on our budget. And one of the reasons we're high on our budget is because we're using a DDR5 platform here with Alder Lake. Now there's nothing wrong with Alder Lake per se. However, I, we don't want to go DDR5 with it. Let's take a step back. What do we want to do when we're producing a streaming PC? This is a PC where we're going to stream our gameplay. We're hopefully on a service like Twitch or YouTube gaming. Well, we want are a cool looking PC, at least in some of the background shots. It's a very competitive space. You gotta look the part, especially if you're gonna spend $2,800 on it. And I'm seeing a bunch of mismatched stuff because we've gone for some very expensive components. Let's start off with DDR5. DDR5 at $226 on a 32 gigabyte kit. Now this is a great kit. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it looks fantastic. But the problem with the kit is that you're not gonna get any more performance out of this than you would with DDR4. And that has nothing to do with DDR5 memory being bad. It has everything to do with the Alder Lake controller, memory controller, is just not able to fully utilize DDR5. Hopefully Ryzen 7000 and uh, you know 13th gen Intel will do a lot better. We saw this with DDR4 as well when it first came out. And we're going with the i7-12700K. I think we're overspending on some of our components like the CPU. This is gonna require a lot more cooling, it's potentially gonna make a lot more noise in the background when you got a microphone not too far away from your face and your PC. Probably not the best choice when we could have gotten away with a much cooler and cheaper CPU. I love the cooler Cooler Master uh, ML240. However, I just question it with the i7-12700K. And then of course, we've got a very expensive ROG Strix Z690F game. The motherboard's fantastic, absolutely fantastic, but it's also still very, very expensive. And the ASUS boards have not come down the way other Z690s have. There are other Z690 boards with similar feature sets. They might not look as cool, but they look pretty cool for not that much money. I don't mind the drive that we got, but I just question why we only got a terabyte of space. This is something, especially if we're gonna en end up editing our own video and storing a lot of this stuff, I think we want at least two terabytes of storage. I don't understand our, our, our thought process here. We went with an RTX 3080 10 gigabyte card that's an expensive one, the ROG Strix one. Now, here's the thing is a lot of these uh, 3080 10 gigabyte cards, the production on them is, is decreasing. Most of the cards now going to 12 gigabyte. As, as far as I can see in all the GPU availability. So if, if we want to buy something and we want to buy it now, I think 3080 or 12 gigabyte or 6900 XT is still the way to go. Now, just know that if you wait another five or six months, you know, we'll probably have next generation cards. However, will we have them available? And if you want to get started now, no, you'll probably end up having to wait five, six, maybe even seven months for them. So if you want to build something now, this would be the way to go, but I think we can do better. Uh, the case, the Roswell Prism 500, I don't have a problem with this case. All the airflow, by the way, comes from the bottom in this case, very unusual. Inwin makes a very similar case to this. I don't love it. It's not the showpiece that we want. Power supplies, absolutely fine. But for $2,858, I just feel like we're leaving so much on the table because we didn't fundamentally understand what our goals were for this streaming PC. All right, I called this a $2,800, 1440p gaming and streaming monster with two awesome monitors. Yes, we did finish out at $2,800. We're like $4.87 over, I hope that's okay. And hopefully you'll be able to find similar parts in your market. We're looking to have an awesome set piece in our stream so that when people join our stream, it looks like we know what we're doing in terms of being a cool gamer. I went with more of a matte gray and kind of all white finish to this and a lot of RGB that's gonna look really, really nice and we're gonna be able to easily coordinate it. Let's start off with the monitors of all places because I was just wasn't happy with the monitors that we had. Instead, we're gonna get you two amazing monitors, the MSI Optics Mag 27 for QRF QD. Yes, I know some uh, monitors have come out recently. They kind of have replaced this in, uh, in, the, in the lineup. However, they're out of stock just about everywhere and this is still a phenomenal monitor and right now on sale for $390 each. 
these are high quality monitors. These are, I would consider these mid-range to the upper tier of 1440p in terms of the quality, the color gamut, uh, the response time, uh, all of the uh, traditional things that you look for in a monitor. And we're gonna get you two of them. We're able to get you those two monitors because we're gonna go down on the CPU to an i5-12600K with DDR4 memory. 12600K, remember this has six performance cores and four E cores. That's plenty to run your game and your stream at the same time. Absolutely no reason to go with the 12700K that only adds two performance cores and adds a lot more cooling to our CPU, which we don't really want. We don't want a lot of noise in this thing. We want it to run nice and cool in the background and look awesome. You can save a little bit of money by going with a KF, but again, we get some benefit when we do video encoding during video export, at, you know, during video editing. So I went ahead and got that instead. But if the KF is significantly cheaper and you're not gonna do a lot of video exporting, then go ahead and grab that instead. Again, sticking with our all white theme, I just decided to stick with your cooler. It's a phenomenal cooler. It looks amazing. And I think the 12600K, this is not gonna have any problems with whatsoever. Sticking with that white theme and DDR4 cheaper for $112, we're gonna go 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 CL16 memory. It's a two by 16 gigabyte kit. It's gonna look absolutely amazing. RGB on these looks really, really nice. And 32 gigabytes is gonna give you plenty for streaming or video editing now and in the future. Now we're tying this whole thing together with a Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X. This is like a $200 motherboard. $200 for a, a motherboard with the same feature set as the one that you were gonna spend nearly $370 on. That's a lot of money that, that could go to other components and we're putting into those components to get you more performance or aesthetics. If you don't like the Gigabyte Gaming X for some reason, you can get like the MSI Tomahawk Wi-Fi board for about the same price. But the reason I like this, it has just a better feature set than the Tomahawk, slightly better feature set than the Tomahawk. And I do like the matte gray on this, especially with the white elements that we're putting into the build. I think it's gonna look really awesome. We are gonna throw in two terabytes of space, Samsung 970 Evo. This is a great Gen 3 prosumer level drive for $190. And we are tying this thing together with the uh, AORUS RTX 3080 12 gigabyte. This thing looks absolutely freaking amazing. It's gonna look amazing in your build and it's only $800. It's less than the Strix version. This is actually one of the higher power RTX 3080 12 gigabyte models. Now, if the GPU market looks differently, if this model isn't available, I would just grab the cheapest RTX 3080 12 gigabyte that I could and call it a day. That will absolutely be great for you. And failing that, the RX 6900 XT is another really, really good option. I would consider either one one of those and I would look to spend as little as you can, especially given that yes, new GPUs are coming down the pike, but they're probably six or seven months away. We're tying it all together with a Corsair IQ 4000X RGB case. I absolutely love this case on sale right now in the US for 125-ish dollars really gonna look great on your stream. I stuck it out with your power supply because a thousand watt PSU EVGA Supernova, this this is a great unit. I've got one in a in a build uh, right over here. Does really well and for $140, it's a pretty good price too. Cooler Master Master fan, this is for the rear exhaust. This will tie it all together with that cooler. And for $2,800, just about even, we're gonna get you a lot more performance. We got you an RTX 3080 12 gigabyte. We got you a cool looking build where all the aesthetics are actually gonna match. We came down to a DDR4 platform that's gonna give you great performance while looking amazing. And we got you a much better case and other aesthetics along with those cool monitors, those amazing monitors. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Thank you for joining us on this month's Boost My Build. Let me know down in the comments what did you think of the build? And of course, remember, if you got value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. Of course, if you missed our earlier Boost My Build from this month or any of our other episodes, check them all out right here. Go through Boost My Build, have a lot of fun, and we'll catch you on the next one.